six-man tag team action. There's always an ability to keep up with that younger generation. So much talk about this younger generation, even in the junior heavyweight division. As these two men gonna wanna keep an eye on that junior division just the same, Morishima. Flying forearm shot, manages to take down Takamishinoku. And we're gonna wanna see it one more time. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And the cover here for Morashima, and it's two. New junior heavyweight champion, a lot of eyes on the junior division. El Desperado out of action for New Japan Pro Wrestling with meniscus surgery. We send our best to El Desperado. Excited to see what comes next in the junior heavyweight division when Despe manages to make that return. But meanwhile, there's a hole to be filled. Could be filled with a guy like Morishima, and this is not a maneuver. I would dare test out on a man like Takuma Shinoku as Mishinoku try as he might. Gonna have to make it to that bottom rope to force the break. And he does. And Morishima wants to take that spirit learn from Bolton Oleg in that no gay dojo. That's a legendary knee right there from Taka. And has to watch out here. Once it seeks it out, shined off the dome for Taka Minishinoku. Shinoku sets it up, wants it, can he get it right here? Super K connects into the cover. And broken up by Toriyano. Been a while since we've seen that Super K here in New Japan Pro Wrestling, but he got it. And we're gonna need this just the same. Mishinoku wants it, sets it up, got it right here. It's the just face lock. Just face lock locked in right here. Katsuya Morishima has absolutely nowhere to go, and Sonata is going to tie up Toru Yano. Paradise. The hell could have expected that. Tag made. Here's Shoto Omino. And that hip fracture be damned. The embarrassment of losing to Gabe Kid be damned as well. There is a time to pick yourself up, and that time comes now. That time comes in Nagasaki for Block A. As Shota Omino. Oh, we've seen this song and dance before as Shota scouted out since Osaka. No, survey says we're going to find out here. Up, down. Umino off the ropes. Drop kick. Umino has solved that piece to Cal Newman that he was not able to do so back in Osaka on night one in block A competition. Cal Newman's only two points on the board. And Shota could find himself with a total of four after a win over Okan in Nagasaki. Cover here, and it's two. Umino said it himself in post-match comments, you can call me a phony, a fake, or the lowest of this generation. That's fine. I will turn the tables around to what you should have expected from the get-go. We're going to see if that Shota Umino evolved, that Shota Umino that just six months ago, eight months ago, faced off against Osprey at Power Struggle, one of my first nights here. Here's Great Okan, by the way, looking to flip the table on its head right now. And Umino going to have to make it to that bottom row. It's going to be a very simple decision here tonight for Great Okan. Going to charge in forward. Shoto Umino out of the way. Trips up Francesco Akira on the down low. And Great Okan going to have to take advantage wherever he finds it. And finds it. He does. Connects right on the button. Does shooter. And that's shooter to shooter right there. But could this be Shota to Shoma? There it is. Tag made. A lot to learn from the front man himself, the best technical wrestler in the world. But there is no way to counteract, there is no way to counter-wrestle blatant disrespect for the rules like this. And there's nothing else you should have expected from Jake Lee and Gabe Kidd, respectively. Nevertheless, the bell sounded, and Jake Lee is already taking it to his upcoming Block A opponent in Nagasaki. Yeah, you can see the confidence on display from Gabe Kidd to Kosei Fujita. And this is Kosei Fujita, not his first time running into Bullet Club War Dogs, especially into that fashion. Never forget that IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Title Defense, Kosei Fujita and Ichiban Sweet Boys, Robbie Eagles. Taking it to 
War Dogs own Joel Maloney and Clark Connors, still junior heavyweight tag team champion in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Fujita has felt that ferocity, he has felt that terror that comes from staring down the bullet of a gun, and Zack Sabre Jr. Good Lord, my kneecap's taken out just like Zack's spine. Right in front of us here at the English broadcast booth. To do what we can to try and compose ourselves, and there's no composure within these men, especially the likes of Gabe Kidd. And we're talking the antithesis to one another with the same goal here tonight are Gabe Kidd and Jake Lee. Jake Lee, we've seen that ferocity, we've seen that anger and aggression. It came out against Sonata in night one, it came out most recently in Hiroshima against Tetsuya Naito, especially following what Jake Lee went on to call a fluke victory over himself back on that night. The Gabe Kid does not have an off switch. And the side. Tag made now. Evil, the legal man, once again has that shirt right within the hands, right within the grasp. Our official, here's Kenta Sato. Oh, come on, and that's the tag rope. Took it right from around ringside. The tag rope right around the throat of Tetsuya Naito. El Ingobernable cannot be saved in this position. Tosses out right in front of us here at the broadcast booth. This is absolutely egregious. We have seen an aggressive toning down from House of Torture in some antics, some ways. Cover here, Evil out at two. But what is Lacton? Well, you listen to the people here. This is still a pro Tetsuya Naito crowd, no matter what anyone might want you to think. What's lacked in interference will be made up for in chicanery and aggression. And Evil is going to prove that here tonight. Once again, has that positioning, wants a neck breaker. Naito brings it out, and he's going to hold on as long as he wishes, and he drops down. And Naito is going to have to call on his biggest ally in LIJ, it's Shingo Takagi. And Evil, Dick Togo nowhere to be found. Shingo Takagi takes out Dick at ringside. And Shingo's feeling himself here tonight, folks. Blow like a butterfly, sting like a bee, and there's that corner bomber. And Shingo often does not realize his own strength. He was five years old deadlifting. Oh my. Bolton Ellick, interesting strategy here. Wants to go for that Boston Crab staple of the Noge Dojo, fundamental hold. And locks it in right here on Hiroki Goto. Bolton Oleg seeks to do what Hiroki Goto did in his very first G1 appearance back in G1 18. Enter your debut G1 climax and walk away with the trophy in the end of the night. But Bolton Oleg, it's going to be a long road toward that. Goto try as he might. Going to have to make it to that bottom rope, and it's only inches away from him, Colin. Talk before about athletes that have their own specific style of matches. There is the Tomohiro Ishii style of match. You found that out firsthand in singles competition. The same could very well be said about a man like Hiroki Goto, who will move at his own style, move at his own pace, and likes to keep it within control. I've only ever been involved in tag matches with him, but brother's got a very unique style. And it's one that Bolton Oleg's really going to have to adapt to if he wants to have any chance of surviving in this tournament. Not at risk of elimination just yet, but watch this. Misdirection, Goto, oh. that is a Goto staple with the Misdirection Lariat. So interesting, talking to Katsuya Morishima earlier on in the evening and in post-match comments even, he praised Bolton Oleg's work ethic and growth in training and says he wants to follow in his footsteps. The Nogay Dojo sees Bolton Oleg as a beacon. Kazakhstan sees Bolton Oleg as a beacon. But can Bolton Oleg 
managed to not crumble under the pressure. In a G1 Climax 34, victory over Hiroki Goto back in Osaka. And Jeff, hold Jeff, on Jeff, a minute, Jeff. hold on oh, a hey. minute. Oh, come on, give me a damn break. <laughs> Ren Narita making a very early appearance on, and it looks like we're going to get this match started a little bit sooner than expected. And Narita, Narita, watch out here right in front of us at the broadcast booth. And Jeff Cobb looks like he's going to be taking a tour all throughout our arena here tonight in Kagawa. Well, far be it from Ren Narita to play by the rules, but this is not the first time that these two men, as soon as we get back in the ring, will be facing off against each other in singles competition. But Jeff Cobb has never faced this variation, this incarnation of Ren Narita ever since he became sold out, ever since he aligned himself with House of Torture. The history is dangerous. Before a very, very good technical wrestler yes. now. Just a horrible oh, good, oh, good, 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 Lord, good Lord, Jeff Cobb gonna have to change the narrative. Yes! Oh, belly to belly on the chairs. Narita sent flying. And gone for Ren Narita are the claims of being a Katsuyori Shibata clone, but replaced by a much darker force and a much more evil entity. That dark force, I mean, hey, it might have worked out in the first opening mimic. We're, we're not even involved in this matchup right now. The bell hasn't even sounded, but Jeff Cobb has quickly turned things on its tide, Callum. <laughs> we're trying to do our best to keep up with the action here right in front of us, but referee Marty Asami wants to bring this one back inside the ring. Jeff Cobb believes it should have started there from the get-go, and it looks like we're going to have ourselves a match. To walk in with a mindset that says, I'm not sure if I even belong in New Japan anymore, let alone in G1 Climax. Is that an insult to a guy like you who had to fight through a damn tournament just to compete in this one? For everyone in this tournament, they kind of got a, an in. I had to do three extra singles matches on top of a tour where I got beaten with a kendo stick, punched in the face, just for him to say, oh no, I'm sad. <laughs> but at least Hikaleo done it in person and not over text. I think that'd be a little bit worse. Yeah. Fantasmo saying, I don't have a friend left in the world. Oh, but definitely has a little bit of technique left in him. Bam, knee shot right to that wrist. And that wrist control could be a difference maker. Fingers interlocked. DLP still has got the gift. And that gift takes the Tejenis down. And the head bang up. Feeling it here tonight. LP gonna want to take this one high risk. Oh. And Suji caught LP right off the dome. And that is bad news for LP going forward. And a shot like that, Calum, I know that you've had your moments of being on the other side of things like that. That will completely change the complexion of this match going forward. Rock your world. The net, you see the stars, he, he went straight to the floor, so that's your back. Everything all at once, a complete shock to the system. Fantasmo's got to try and keep his guard up wherever possible, but the confidence still remains. There's never a problem with seeing that. Yeah, go and wind him up more. And Hanare, it only takes one. That punch to the liver has David Finley spitting out here on the outside.
Khan, one of the best strikers in the game for a reason, and Hinare puts that on display one more time against the global heavyweight champion. And he knows how good he strikes are. One punch and he can breathe, he can take his time, he can relax a little bit. between these two men has been stated enough, but you can feel it, and the tension continues to mount in this room as the match rolls on. Hinare off the ropes, one and through with the lariat, but instead, David Finley falls himself flat on his ass. And Hinare wants it one more time. Lariat turns Finley inside out. The cover here for Hinare, and it's two. This is not just a battle between Hanare and David Finley. It is United Empire versus the War Dogs. It is never over. Yes. Yu Uemura. Oh, we saw this against David Finley back night one of G134. Uemura has been trying this dragon suplex as of recent. It's to catch the two large survey says yes. Oh, but Uemura, oh, bigger they are, the harder they fall. Oh, man. Oh, man. Hey. And Uemura's not done. See you later. Long oh. shot to catch the back of the neck. Oh. And a lariat that plants Uemura down. Watch out. Drop kick. And we're on fire tonight. <laughs> you want to see professional wrestling, you turn on G1 Climax 34. And you turn it on when you're in the damn tournament as well. Getting some life into this audience here tonight, and it's only Yuya Uemura and Kanosuke Takeshita alike that are able to bring it out of them. But the life is going to be able to dwindle very shortly should one man get his way. Oh, what did that dragon? Kanosuke Takeshita instead. Blue Thunder. Blue oh, Thunder Bomb oh, oh. out of nowhere. Folding in. Takeshita. Two. There have been a lot of difference makers in terms of maneuvers with Takeshita in this tournament, but you have to watch out that power drive knee and that raging fire Falcon Arrow. And that might be what we see here. One in it, not enough. Oh, Uemura, Uemura, oh, Dragon Suplex. No! When you hit your hardest shots and that do not work out for you, you have to find something deeper. You have to believe in something and bleed deeper than anyone is willing to do so in this tournament. Little more, I have something in mind here. Where are we going, Cal? I'm taking it to the top. Uh, oh, wanted that splash, and Takeshita had it scouted well out. And Pele kick caught Yuya. Caught Takesta rather right on that side. And once again, everyone's down. <laughs> 